Why don't you give me a sign? This is Corinna Jane. That leaves a trail along that shore. It's not your problem, it's mine. With her brand new single, Give Me a Sign. As featured on BBC Introducing. It's just the way it's gotta be. Corinna Jane, give me a sign. Out now. If someone were to say to you why what happened all those years ago had to have happened to you, how would you respond? Hello, I'm Sophia Jessica and welcome to the Fan Carpet. Hi, Goran. Hi, hi, how are you? Good, I'm good, how are you? I'm very good. Very good, thanks. Cool, I'm Chloe, so I'm just gonna jump straight into it, okay? Yeah, please, go shoot. Hi, I'm Chloe from The Fan Carpet, and today I'm talking to Goran Vishnik about his latest film, Fatima. It's a beautiful story, Goran. Tell me, what attracted you to this film? Well, uh, it was, it, I loved it on a, on, a, on a couple of different levels. Uh, I love the story. I heard of it before, but I've never, I've never experienced it this close. I mean, I've, I've never went in and really saw what happened. So I was, when I read the script, I was really intrigued by it. And then uh, Marco Pontecorvo was a really interesting director uh, and really wanted to work with him. And uh, I have to say, I've never been in Portugal before. So it sounded to me on a personal level as a really great experience. And to be a part of something like this, I uh, wanted, to, wanted to be part of the film, you know, part of this story. And your character, Arturo, tell me more about him. Well, Arturo was, at the time, he was, he was kind of in charge. You know, it was a weird time in Portugal. Uh, he was a mayor of the area. Uh, and uh, the government of Portugal at that time was uh, very, uh, I don't want to say openly against the church, but that's uh, pretty much close as, as it was. Uh, pe the churchgoers were looked, uh, you know, they were frowned upon. It was considered to be very uneducated, very kind of not in to go to church. And they were even closing some churches, as you can see in the film. And it was a very difficult time uh, for, for, for believers, you know. It was a difficult time to actually go to church. If you were seen going to church, you know, you, you, were, you knew that was kind of like a negative thing for advancement in your work or in your career and stuff like that. So when Arturo is f faced with what's happening with these children, I mean, his first instinct is we need to shut this story down. No matter, he wasn't even thinking, is it true or not? Like, we need to shut it down. Mm -hmm. And obviously, kids, the kids are lying, you know. And the deeper he goes in, his frustration grows because he sees these kids and he knows these people. I mean, these are like nice people good working hard working people and he is more and more appalled by the fact that he that things are getting out of his control and people who are above him in the government you know they're going to be not, you know not very happy about what he's done and uh, it's it's pretty much in his words you know the the, the 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 things are getting out of control and he's feared for his you know for his career for his political career and stuff like that until he actually in real life when he was present during that last miracle he literally leaves public life he leaves public servancy and becomes becomes a private citizen and kind of disappears from the scene something broken and he experienced something for sure so it was, it was an interesting path for Arturo. It was, definitely. How did you research for your character? Did you just jump online and, and do that? Or did you talk yeah, to Yeah, I mean, pr pretty much so. And then when we came to Portugal, it was easier to get your hands on, on, the, on, on, on the literature and talking with people over there, you know. When, when Arturo was well-remembered, you know, he, 
he was not as as although we, we in, in our movie we didn't make him villainous as he would maybe end up in a, in a proper american movie you know like a uh, mustache twirling <laughs> bad guy but we did make him a little bit more than he actually was it was uh you know when you, when people talk about him they they kind of knew of his predicament and he was really just trying to get to the bottom of it he was re- if he had some kind of a uh, proof like proper proof in his position that this really did happen he would say okay in that case you know i'm fine but of course we know the proof in this in this this kind of case is the you know that that's the point that there is no proof it's mm-hmm. it's a matter of faith exactly. so uh it was it was interesting to go there and talk to people about the events and you know i was actually in fatima i was i was in the house where the children were living and i was in uh we were in that area we were filming right there so it was it was kind of like it was easy to feel and breathe all of that you know it was it was uh you know our costume department scenography and everything came really well together and shooting in portugal it was it was kind of like it was easier for us as 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 actors to do our job mm. and your first time to portugal so you must have enjoyed that it was it was it was it was beautiful it's it's very unusual looking you know we we think of portugal as as european by the by the nature you know i mean european it's kind of the big big wide uh, uh word but because it's all the way to atlantic and it's almost surrounded by atlantic and and spain on the other side the geography of the place is beautiful and it's kind of like scorched land it's almost between between midwest and and some kind of eastern europe it's really beautiful uh midwest i'm thinking in the, in the us mm. and, cross between eastern europe it's really beautiful land what are you, what are you uh, hoping audiences will take away from when they watch this film well f- first of all the the message that's been given to these kids in in my opinion you know after all this being a part of the project and researching and reading about it and and seeing the movie um in my eyes you know the, it's it's the message of peace and love it's the message of you know pray more but not in a in a way you know pray more to get you know more money or pray to get new car it just pray to be better to, to for the world to be a better place for us to to be better people towards each other because when you do that you know other things are going to come on, on its own almost you know mm-hmm. so the bottom line for me from this movie would be th- this message of peace and love and uh and and how these kids went through a lot to deliver this message you know you can say it's kind of come at the right time being with this pandemic and all it's it's a great movie for people to go and watch well yeah it's it's a <laughs> there's a uh, yeah i'm i'm thinking about i'm i'm thinking about uh you know uh uh vaccines and people talking against vaccines and uh connection with uh, religion and this and that it's it's kind of really weird time right now you know it's like um i mean i don't want to go into details of that you know but it, w- w- what's kind of bothering me it's like the people believe in science you know when they're like using their cell phones and flying in their airplanes you know 30,000 feet in the air but when we when we talk about vaccines you know okay let's ignore science and just spread theories and stuff like that so i don't want to i don't want that to be connected with this movie you know and a beautiful message that that it, that it brings you know so What how did you spend lockdown then? What have you been up to? <laughs> I moved in the middle of the lockdown from the US to to England and oh, wow. yeah so uh we we the, the plan was in motion be, before covid you know ju- I when I just signed the contract for my new house in England and two weeks later the lockdown started happening and covid kind of got out of control. So uh we 
or they sent a container with stuff uh, to the England and then container container was just waiting there for months and we lived in the in Los Angeles during the lockdown and kind of like very minimal uh, furnishing and everything because everything was sent over the ocean so it was it was quite interesting but it was it was it was some kind of like a nice bonding time for me and my kids because every weekend religiously we went to desert I have a I have a four by four so uh, instead of being in a lockdown you know we just went to desert there's nobody there so you know I wasn't doing anything bad or anything wrong you know so we were uh, we actually went through lockdown quite good because LA is quite big and it's spread you're not living in a in a tall buildings on a 10th floor and you have three kids jumping through the apartment so and then in the second part when things kind of eased down the last summer we moved to England and uh, I spent the last whole year in England in again really beautiful place in Cornwall so I've been blessed by being able just to spend my lockdown on the beach. Mm. Wow, beautiful. It's like you've had a good a good lockdown in a way, spending time with family. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, uh, some people would try to find bad things in it, you know, but I'm I'm not like that. So I'm trying to make any situation, you know, I'm trying to see the, the, the most positive out of it. You know, you could be crying about this and that, or I haven't been working for a year and a half, or the, you know, but look, it, it is what it is. Uh, we're all trying to, to make, uh, you know, the best out of the situation. Exactly. Now, a lot of people would know you from your days in ER, and you've played a variety of different characters over your career. What attracts you to your next role? Uh, I, I always start with the script, you know, when the offer comes, uh, or is something that my people think I have a chance, fighting chance to win something or get something, I like to read the script, number one. Mm -hmm. and if the script and the character is something that I really enjoy. Or if I see not necessarily something that's going to be enjoyment of seeing myself portraying this character, but something I've never done before, something I can do, do something differently or something that's going to enrich my experience in any way, by, by location, by the character, by people, you know, they're all going to be, it's going to all going to be, you know, part of my judgment. It's so many different kind of moving blocks. But you start with the script, with the role, and the next step is director, people involved in it, you know, so it's kind of like it, 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 it's not just boom, you know, it's, it's step by step. Sometimes it does happen that everything is just like you're like, oh, my God, I can't believe this. You know, I'm blessed uh, that I'm going to be able to be a part of this project, you know, or fight for it. It always helps, you know. Mm -hmm. I recently saw you in Doctor Who. That was amazing. <laughs> See, that was that was, for example, one of those like, okay, this is this was just me. This was me. Goran wanted to be this, you know. So they called and they were like, you know, we're we're doing this episode with Nikola Tesla, and Tesla was born in Croatia at the time. It was Austro-Hungarian Empire, you know. But we we like to, you know, he you on a way to my hometown, you know, you pass by his house here in Croatia. So, mm -hmm. and uh, he was such an amazing guy, amazing scientist. And when they, they told me, a, you know, we would love you to do this. And I said to my agent, oh my God, I'm like, let, let's make it work. I don't care how, you know, it was a lot of like problems with like, oh my God, he's in LA. We need to pay him to travel here. Then he, you know, it was kind of like, it's it's not exactly Hollywood production, you know, in that department, you know, but we we made it work, and uh, I had so much fun with everybody on the show, and it was it was it was really it was really awesome. I really enjoyed myself, you know. It was one of those like pig in the mud jobs, you know, <laughs> really and kind of have fun. Yeah. So was that one of the times where you didn't even read the script? You were just like Doctor Who. I'm doing it. Well, no, I, I, I needed to read the script just to make sure I'm not going to be end up ending up doing something really horrible, you know, but no, script, script, script was great, you know, sometimes, yeah, sometimes they tell you, you know, it's a, it's this and this is the project, mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, please God, let's just let the script be really good, you know, sometimes you read the script and you're like, oh, they kind of messed it up really bad, yeah. so 
when that happens, it's kind of really, you know, something you want to do, but there are like some things you don't like about, you try to kind of fix it, you can't try to go around and make it work, but sometimes it's just not worth it. But for Doctor Who, everything, everything worked out, you know, uh, it was, it was really, it was really one of those jobs that tick all the boxes, you know. Perfect. Yeah. So what's the rest of 2021 look like for you? Uh, some things are starting happening right now. You know, I've been kind of like, uh, I was just talking to your colleague uh, before they asked me and I'm like, if, if you talk to me in five days, I might be able to share some news, but now, unfortunately I can't, mm -hmm. but uh, it looks, it looks promising. The, the second half of the year looks, looks like it's going to be busy, you know? Great. Well, that's really good. Well, yeah. I look forward to uh, seeing more of you on the screen soon. And uh, thanks for talking to me today. Of course. Thank you, Chloe. Cool. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. And you. Thank you for watching The Fan Carpet. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for more content next time. You're making lies up. Why would the mother of God choose you? I can see her now. Faith begins at the edges of understanding. on the largest of the Balearic Islands, Mallorca. With the turquoise waters of the Mediterranean Sea, beautiful mountainous landscape, the thriving city of Palma, quaint little market towns, a growing number of luxury hotels, it's no surprise that the likes of Audrey Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor like to holiday here. So come and join me as I take you around Mallorca. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.